starting the day off with two pivots broke down. Awesome. Morning everybody. Welcome to Tuesday. So this guy stopped because of alignment faulted. <clears throat> Sorry. Allergies are kicking my butt. Way too early in the season. So this end tower is out of line. Let's go to the pivot point. See if I can wiggle it around and get it back up and moving. We got a, a tenth of an inch of rain last night. Which, don't get me wrong, it's nice. But honestly, now that we're in August, I just prefer it didn't rain. It had its chance to rain June and July. Or let us down. Now, crops are about ready to be harvested. We got hang to do. We got a million things that need done. I'm no point now where I don't want rain because the risk associated with a thunderstorm this time of year isn't worth the price. What do I mean by risk? I'm talking about the white combine, hail. I've got two different farmers <clears throat> that I follow on Instagram up in Canada. They were like three days into harvest. Got who hit the hailstorm Sunday night. Leveled their crops. Made it all the way to harvest just for Mother Nature to go, nope, not today. Looks like State Patrol caught a truck out here on the highway. I don't even know if you guys can see the blue lights down there. Anywho, so fired it up going the other way. That end tower is way out that away for some reason. But I've seen all seven of them move. Some thing we got a gearbox just starting to go bad. So I'm gonna stop it. I hate this panel. But unlike the other one the other day, at least I can read this one. Turn it back to wet. Fire it up. Pump start up. Here the water. That's nice. That's, that's not supposed to be a drain like that. But the plug keeps getting blown out, and in order to fix it, you have to take the collar off there so you can get your arm on the inside. So in the meantime, we just shove in an auto drain. Once it pressures up, that'll quit leaking. I don't know if you can see it in the mirror. We got ourselves a random guy out here walking. Looks kind of like a drifter. I don't, I don't know. Hopefully he's all there mentally, unlike the last couple we've had out here. We've had, we seem to have our fair share of randos out here that just... They checked out of this world a long time ago. Okay, we'll see if that pivot keeps running. I know what's wrong with that one based on the fact the end tower's leaning so hard. It's in the hole again that it's been in before. That one, the overwatering timer went out on it and it just sat there and ran for several hours. Digging a hole. And so now every time it comes through there, it gets stuck. So, give me a chain and the little loader. Well, doesn't this feel familiar? Yeah, I'd say she's a little stuck. All the way down to the friggin' frame. Well, what's funny is this isn't where it got stuck last time, because that's why I cut that hole there, because it was stuck right here. And, after three service calls on it, apparently it's still not fixed, because I was asking the tuna. I go, hey, it doesn't say alignment fault. And he goes, yeah, I know. I went out there first thing this morning to see, and it was still just sitting there running in place. Which would explain why it dug such a massive hole, because it won't shut off! Ah, that's frustrating. We're going to see what kind of power this little tractor's got. I've got it set really slow so the other towers don't walk out ahead of me. We'll see how it works out. Come on, baby, pull! Dig! There we go! Hot damn, I was kind of thinking I was going to have to go find a better tractor. I think if I get it up kind of about yonders, we'll be okay. It's going to be a mess through here. Then we'll let it get down in the corn and pigweeds over there before we call them to come work on it again. <laughs> oh, yeah, easy peasy. Now we get to watch the other end disappear in there. The 
that pivot running. Get this guy cleaned out to get that one running. Um, this one, so we bailed the hay. What was that? Night before last. Yeah, because last night was over there. So we bailed the hay night before last. So it's going to go out of the corn across the hay and then stop because we are done irrigating this cornfield. This is actually one we were intending to sample this afternoon. We'll see if that's still the plan after our sprinkle. I heard Cameron say he had an inch in his rain gauge in town. I had a tenth at my house over yonders. One of us is completely wrong. Although, the way the thunderstorms have been this year, that might not be. Um, last night, it was five o'clock or so. We were looking at radar flash flood warning for a little town called Simla. It's kind of up there, east Colorado Springs, just off the front range. Over five inches of rain. Um, what night was it last week? Because we were in a flash flood watch. Tuesday of last week. Because we had just kind of gotten started swathing and then we kind of slowed down because all of a sudden they issued a flash flood watch in the morning. Which made us go, okay, so there's going to be something crazy happen. A little town called Pumpkin Center. Down the middle of nowhere, straight east Colorado Springs, 50 miles, 11 inches of rain. That's a lot of rain. So, yeah, storms have been hit and miss, to say the least. Oh, well, that guy's still going. The uh, the first one that we messed with that had the alarm and fault, it ran for 10 minutes and stopped. So, hopefully, the medics here by now working on it. It's about 9:30. Got the baler. We've been baling a lot lately, so they need a little loving before we get busy with silage. Cameron's already got his down here. We've got to refill them with twine, pump some grease in them, make sure they're just ready to go for the next couple of weeks while we try and wrap up third. Now, I've never said we're in third cutting now. We're about a quarter of the way through. I know I'm going to jinx myself, but guys, I actually made it two nights in a row without breaking this stupid shear bolt. Oh, I'm on a roll. It's probably going to break right away tonight. Oh, I ain't missing near as much as I thought. Six. Not ain't bad. Catch all that. Oh. So this guy, very good string. Leave that guy for the next one. This one's on your time too. I always pull out about ten feet. that much because we've had trouble with like twine getting stuck to itself and then you gotta re string the baler at night that really sucks oh. over here. All right, now I'll grab a grease gun. You know, there is a reason I farm in the desert. It's because humidity 
was invented by the devil. Holy shnikes. It's like 70% humidity out there and that sun is starting to heat up. Ooh. It's going to be a long day. And I picked the wrong day to switch from shorts to jeans. But I don't like running a chopper in shorts because that's just asking for a problem. Tuna's out doing tuna things. Everybody say hi. Okay, just finished changing oil, air filter, cab air filter on that. So it's ready for harvest. Managed to stab my finger with my knife, changing the cab air filter. That was fun. All right. So unless you are a member, you have not seen this chopper. Posted a members only video of this thing arriving last week, getting it all unloaded and everything. So I should be a member, get that extra content. Shameless plug. Anyhow, anyhow, anywho. New rolls going in. They got the bottom two in. Hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have the other two going in. Ah, let me see who's calling. Got somebody else sorting bales today. I guess you guys wouldn't get that joke because I was on Instagram. So if you aren't following me on Instagram, do that. I was the one yesterday sorting bales. It was a fun-filled day, let me tell you. But Kenny's off the other barn just making sure he's doing what. Anyway, so we're getting... Oh, all these new parts installed that I went to go get. One thing we don't have to mess with is knives and cutter bar. Cutter bar's got some pretty good dents in it, but not too bad. Uh, they're already done inside with the blower and those liners. I, I believe they've already got it bolted back shut in here. And yeah, they got all the parts out. Yeah, everything's in place, ready to go in there. Transition tube liners are done. Spout liners are done. This one there where the harvest lab box is opened up does not have a harvest lab. So we actually had to find our spacer plate. Not real sure why they took the harvest lab out. Whatever. In here, let me turn on the screen so I can make sure I'm pointing in the right direction. So the radiator there, radiator fan, the pulley system right in there. Both bearings were out, and I mean out, out to where... Much more use, there's a good chance that fan would have just fallen off into the radiator. And that would have been a very big problem. So we got that fixed and noticed, well, the fan belt is rubbing on the frame for some reason. Come find out, like any drive belt would have, you got a tensioner pulley. The arm for the tensioner was bent so bad, it was shoving that belt into the frame rail. Not a good problem. But these guys are cruising right along. Cameron's been wiring up stuff in the cab. Yeah, the header. Uh, they've gone through every gearbox. We're all good there. Cameron, I think, just finished this morning putting new teeth on it. This thing is a lean, mean cutting machine. He's got the clutches pulled out. Still trying to get all the parts to fix our oil leak over here. I think there's one more fitting. They're still We can't find the fitting in the book, so we're having hell finding it. This is your clutch pack. One for each half of the header. So all your drive is going through here and whenever you lock up that header, this is what slips is inside here. You slip it enough, the, the water inside of there will boil out and then you got a big problem. Luckily we haven't done that yet. Yes, I know I'm speed talking. I've got like three other places I need to be at this exact moment. Trucks, Blanca's truck, 100% ready to go. Hector's truck, we got to tighten the floor chains. Which all that means is these four bolts across the front here. You pull the tensioner pulleys here forward, get the right amount of tension on it, they're good to go. Uh, so we gotta do that and adjust his brakes. Aaron just pulled his down here today. He's going through grease and everything. Then he'll do the chains, then he'll do the brakes, and then he's good to go. So hopefully by mid afternoon, we got three of our trucks 100% ready. The fourth one is in town getting the trailer worked on. Okay, first thing got to check. Can we rake yet? Oh, that top is crunchy, but not quite crunchy enough. The bottom is soggy. Yeah, half an hour he can start. Got a half circle and then like a little three acre patch on the other side of the house. Okay, off to the next problem. He's still pulling bales out of there. And there's all the bales from last night, so 
surely you can get all that figured out. All right, I gotta hurry up, go grab a quick bite to eat, because I was told trucks would be at the shop by 1.30. It's already 12.30. Oh man, I cannot tell you how excited I am. I'm really hoping the corn's drier than I think so that way we can actually go because I'm ready to get harvest started. But as per usual, I mean, we are completely ready. My window's still dirty as crap from last harvest four months ago. <laughs> Blinking lights already. Sensor's going wrong. All right, we're off to a good start. Three more miles up here to the first field to try. I've got four or five trucks. <coughs> oh, sorry. Four or five trucks. We're going to cut every truck full at each field until we just call it a day. Just try and get a good, solid sample of all these. All right, I don't know what else. All right, so day one, complications as always. I mean, it's going to happen. Biggest problem is I forgot my friggin' headset, and I've had... No less than 17 calls and then five truckloads I cut. Holy crap. Um, everything up here is running about 71 and a half, 71 and three quarters. So it needs a solid week yet, but now we know. Our really dry, dead looking stuff like that is actually still holding on about 68. So it's greener than we thought. Sorry, brain lock. We are headed now to the field that I am like 99% sure we can chop the whole thing right now, but we're just gonna cut a sample and move on to the next one. Oh, well, looks like we found 60 acres we'll be able to cut tomorrow. Of course, according to that, I've already cut seven of them, so. Yeah, got three more fields I wanna sample. Well, this is frustrating. Hydraulic oil level in reservoir low. No, it's not. It is full. In fact, it might be over full, but it's definitely not low. Stupid sensors. I really wish you would go away. You are very annoying. Well, I tried another field, 71.5, so kind of like I thought. I, I knew it was green, but it's a field that I checked instead of an agronomist, so I wanted to get kind of reference for me. Like the two ears I pulled were just starting to show signs of dent was that just Friday so five days ago so I figured it was a solid week off but I wanted to that's why I kind of got a frame of reference now we'll see this the feedlot we're hauling to you are very annoying the feedlot we're hauling to sampled every single load today why did that feel like I slowed down um they sampled every single load today so we'll see how their samples compare to my numbers but it looks like we got 60 acres we can cut tomorrow. Other than that, I have no idea what we're going to do for tomorrow. Well, isn't this just peachy? Bar had to call McPherson after hours because it's 6 o'clock down there. Because the sensor we were thinking is for temperature, not level. So, it's sounding like it may be a wiring issue. Like a wire got rubbed somewhere. So, uh, day one, we're already chopper down. Fan friggin' tastic. And, as you can see by the fact I got the fly sprayer, Kayla stole my pickup, which means I don't have any beer here to drink angrily while I stare at the new chopper. Ah, frustrating. His name was Wes. And him and Joe's bed together. There was fucking a few cows got out of the fucking field yard. That fucking old man can rope too. Son of a bitch. I was fucking <laughs> amazing. So as you can see, today took an interesting turn. Man. I think he's going to rope him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The chase is on. Now I gotta figure out how to load him. <laughs> See what happens when I leave my camera in the pickup? I miss all the craziness. 
So, where is our little buddy here? He's laying down. Oh, it's this guy right here chewing. Now he just looked at me. It's that guy. As you can see, he's comfortable hanging out with his new friends. All is well. All is well. And check this out. Our new bunks, not even close to the same shape as the old ones. But it'll work. That's Hector's fun project. I'll let him finish that. But guys, right now we got a chopping plan for tomorrow. It sounds like two choppers running. Hopefully we get mine straightened out early because we told all the trucks we'd start at nine, figuring we got a heavy dew. Because the humidity is already coming up. It's 745. It's time to go bail. Cameron and I are both going to go grab a snack. Go hop in a baler. We got 60, yeah, 60 acres tonight. Hopefully it dried this afternoon. Here we go. Got me some awesome steak sandwiches from the wife. Let's go bale some alfalfa grass random blend. Didn't I say something this morning about shear bolt? Not even one pass. I was busy staring at the deer. Let's see, I got to back up. Maybe I can turn it enough to see them. There they are. See them out there? All right, change this bolt. I believe Cameron is off in the distance over there. Good times, good times. Look at that friggin' moon, a little cloud cover coming in. I was just joking with Cameron a minute ago. I wish cameras could see it as good as we do. Speaking of Cameron. What did he do? Did you break a shear bolt? That's my thing, asshole. You can't take my thing. I'm the one around here that breaks shear bolts. You can just miss an otter or something. I doubt this camera has good enough exposure to see it, but I always find it cool to see how many other farmers are out here at nine o'clock at night trying to get it done with a looming thunderstorm. Now no lightning, it's been a lightning show. I turn the can. Stupid clouds. But I can count three other balers out there besides Cameron and myself. I always find that kind of cool. A combined 60 bales later, we are done. You can see lightning in the distance. A little after 10. Guys, I'm tired. I got a chopper to work on in the morning because we have a chopping plan in the morning if it doesn't rain. Dad, what am I kidding? I'm sure I'll see you guys again tomorrow.